I'll try and project a little bit more. So um, without any further ado, I'm just going to uh, read through uh, some brief uh, rules, of you, if you will, uh, before we get started. Uh, this format is an informal discussion forum. The board president holds the authority to restrict the lengths of time or cease the conversation with any participant or in any topic of conversation. No predetermined agenda topics will be discussed and some rules will apply. Employee personnel matters are considered confidential and therefore should not be brought up. Address the board as a whole. Do not single out individual board members. Though majority quorum of the board will be present, no official board actions will be taken. Uh, decisions will not be made. Votes will not be taken. Official meeting minutes will not be taken. So with that, um, I would ask for our first participant to step forward and state your name and um, we'll enjoy some conversation. Like right, oh, first first of all, um, thank you for thank you for offering this forum and thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak to the board today. I uh, appreciate that you have uh, the ability to have these open open dialogues. My name is Brian Shatola. Uh, I'm the parent of an incoming freshman for the 2023-2024 uh, school year uh, from the Merlin School District. Um, I'm here today to ask questions to the board in regards to the changes to policy 649, specifically in regards to the Cooperative Technology Program, also known as the Chromebook policy, uh, that was presented, voted on, and passed at the board meeting on January the 11th, 2023. My first question to the board is, during tonight's school board meeting, which I immediately followed this forum, will you agree to vote to reverse the changes to policy 649 that passed during the vote at the meeting, January 11th, 2023, school board meeting in regards to the cooperative technology program to allow more time for the community to be able to review and ask questions about the policy changes? At this time, Brian, it is not on our agenda for any further discussion on that. Okay. Um, so first, I just wanted to, um, for the record, get the timeline correct on, the, on that proposal. Um, it's my understanding that on January the 6th, 2023, was the first time the change to policy 649 was posted. Um, with the policy committee meeting agenda for that meeting to occur on January the 10th, 2023. Is that correct? The next time it was posted it was January the 9th, 2023. Potential change to policy 649 posted with the school board meeting agenda for the meeting to occur on January the 11th, 2023. Correct? Right? Okay. Next on the timeline, January the 10th, 2023, 6.45 a.m., there was a policy committee meeting. At that meeting was discussed the potential change to policy 649, formally presented to the committee and discussed publicly, verbally for the first time. Is that also accurate? Do committee, do committee meetings allow for statements to be made and questions to be asked by the committee? No, not at uh, not at committee meetings. No. Okay. So as of January the tenth, there was no input, no ability for the community to give input to the board verbally as a whole. Correct. Right? That's correct. Right. We did receive sure. some emails about. There were it. some emails. Uh, I'm talking ver verbally, being able to discourse with the entire board in a dialogue or in a debate format. Right. <clears throat> correct. Um, that recording. Yes, that's what I'd say. We did have citizen comments before that board meeting, too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm talking about the policy committee meeting, 6.45 a.m. 
on January the 10th. There were committee, there were community statements before that meeting? No, I said there was an opportunity on that board meeting that, that we voted. Yeah, I haven't gotten to the board meeting yet. Okay. And, 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 and Ryan, just, just I, I don't need to just insert myself. However, we do have a great number of people here tonight and in the interest of making sure that we are respectful of everybody here. If we can kind of cut to the chase, we would appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm getting there, but I did give the board, I did ask at the beginning if the board would like to vote to um, rescind the policy so we could have more time to do this discussion. As we go through this timeline, you'll realize that there was really no window for this discourse. And after the passing of it, this is the first chance we've had. So um, I need to take my time here because this is the only time that you allowed for it. If you want to reverse the policy, then we could have more time to do this. We're here for this topic too. Um, so at that policy committee meeting, that was the first time it was discussed verbally, other than just being posted. Um, currently, the recording for that meeting has not been posted to the school board's YouTube site. Is it required that you post it? Because some of the committee meetings are posted to your YouTube site and some are not. We typically post the regular school board meetings. We don't often record committee meetings. So unless you were here at 6.45 a.m. on January the 10th or had happened to see that it was posted, you wouldn't have known that this policy was even um, being discussed. At that committee meeting, which was recorded and posted um, on a different YouTube site, in that meeting, um, Donna Smith stated that she did not have information on the, quote, total financial roll-up. She worked on a preliminary but she would have to bring that back. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, she had pretty strong ballparks on where things were going to be. Okay. She did not have the she did not have the total roll up. Not a total, not exact. Until the next day. Yeah. Next day, January the 11th, 6 30 p.m. Conversation with the community. This was the first and only chance for public discourse over the potential change to policy 649, correct? Since the policy committee meeting did not have financials on January the 10th to discuss, when were the financials first made publicly available? It would seem to be as an attachment to the agenda. Um, the, agenda was, the agenda was posted, you said, on January the 9th but the financials weren't there yet. So when were the financials posted? Because the, believe, the financials weren't available at the January 10th meeting. I'd have to look back on the policy meeting because uh, I believe that there were ballparks that were attached to that one. Um, this did move fairly quickly. Correct. So I'm, I'm understanding where you're going. Correct. So you don't know exactly when the financial numbers were posted? The exact numbers were yeah. probably posted the following day, but the, the preliminary ones were posted with the policy meeting, which would have been a few days prior to that. So there's <clears throat> it's okay if I approach. Mm. This right here is the only financial numbers that I was able to find this document. Okay. Okay. Um, I understand that during the meeting. There was a 12-year um, plan layout, um, I believe, uh, that Mr. Gross had talked about, which I did not find posted publicly. So this, with a four-year projection, is the only thing that I could find. Do you know when that four-year projection was posted? I'd have to go back. I, I think the 10th or the 11th, or somewhere in that ballpark. So you didn't have this four. You, you didn't have this four-year projection at the meeting on the 10th. Correct. Right. Let me see that. I'd have, I'd have to look again to see exactly what you're getting at. You're like, what are you trying yeah. to get at? Just yeah. yeah. I'm getting... Well, I, again, it, with all due respect, I can appreciate that there's somebody else that wants to address this as well. I, well I, there are no, he's addressing. I absolutely problems. respect the community, but this is the only chance you've had for us to do this. As you'll see through the progression, this was brought up to the public and voted on within six days. 
And what I'm going to get to is that you voted to increase our mandatory fees for compulsory services to increase by $75, which increases at 136% without allowing any public debate or discourse over it. So we'll get there. So you can't confirm with me when the four-year projections were posted. Is that correct? I, we're going to guess sometime back. between January the 10th and you know, January the 11th. I, I hate to tell you, but sometimes I don't know what I, I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. We're talking about a month ago. So, so it didn't really list the right, we'll, so we'll say it was posted between the 10th and the 11th in between the 36 hours that occurred between the, the committee meeting and the board meeting voting on it. There's a 36 hour window. What's the, um, so it is, at, is it accurate then that the board passed this policy six days from the official, from the first official public notice? That was our first official notice as well. Okay. So this policy was, was first noted to the public and passed within six days without a general public forum being able to be held on it, other than the standard community forum that would, that would have happened one month ago today. So it's accurate then that the board passed this policy within 36 hours of the initial public verbal presentation of the changes. Did you agree to that? I would, I would, I, without knowing exactly, without going back into the exact dates, I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> And the only and the only opportunity then for public discourse during that 36 hour window was not dedicated to the policy change, but was a general community forum. So is it accurate then that the board passed changes to policy 649 that include approximately $200,000 in cost per year between the district vendors households uh, without a public hearing or dedicated public forum? Well, there's costs and then there's cost savings. And so if you want to present the full package, I think you would have to call Donna back in to He's, appreciate it. I believe Brandon has the four-year projections, which project approximately $200,000 per year in exchange of money between you, the school district, the vendors you purchase the machines from, um, the services that are attached to the devices, and the $75 fee that the community has to pay for it. All of that money together with what you pay, we pay, is totals over two hundred thousand dollars per year. Is that accurate according to those figures? It, it is in terms of the dollar amount. If I recall, there were portions of the conversation that were allocated to things that I I don't know. You can specifically uh, put a dollar amount to. For instance, uh, we would end up uh, picking up um, days worth of education time. Uh, because all of the standardized testing could be done on these laptops all at one time, where right now we're trading them out and we can't do that and we lose learning minutes. So I'm not sure uh, how one puts an exact measure, uh, a dollar amount on, on that trade-off. So you're expecting that with these Chromebooks that are issued to the students that we pay for with our fees are going to be used for them to use as standardized testing machines. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, hold on. How many how many uh, machines are needed to facilitate the standardized testing in the manner in which the board would like it executed? One for each student. So two thousand. Two. So two thousand students are taking it all at once. Currently, we Correct. can't operate that way because we don't have devices. Okay. How many days per year are the machines needed for standardized right, testing? In all fairness, I, I, I do have to just pull the audience and see how many other, other members are here to discuss some other topic. I, I'd like to put some time constraints on where you're at right now. You've already cut a half an hour into our total meeting time. I can appreciate your concerns. It's not that I don't, but I, in all due respect, um, I think in fairness to the rest of the people here that, that want to make public comment, um, you should wrap up your comments and move on to someone else. Regarding the standardized testing, you're expecting that our students are going to use the Chromebooks that you issue to them for their standardized tests. At the committee meeting on January the 10th, 
2023. Donna Smith, she's the uh, IT director here for current school district, correct? Yes. She stated that um, the machines would be secured with securely. Is that accurate? Yes. I, I can't recall the draft. I'm so sorry. So she said, um, so on the recording, she said the machines are secured with securely. She said that, quote, people have found ways around securely. It's a constant. Anytime you quit, you say no, they try, inaudible, to find a way to work around it. Thus, she's reported that students have thwarted the security on school district owned devices, and it continues to be a problem. Wouldn't it make more sense than to have machines for testing? that are solely dedicated to testing that students won't be able to spend time with to realize how to compromise. So you're gonna allow students to take standardized tests on machines that could potentially be compromised and, and used for cheating? No, I, I was Brian, I'd Donna. invite a conversation between you, myself, and Donna to get at the, the okay. technologies that that's, that's an answer. Brian, you've got 30 seconds. We'll get back to that. Um, so, so again, so getting back to the timeline, again, it's accurate that within six days and 36 hours of the first verbal public discourse, that this board has voted to increase compulsory fees, mandatory fees for compulsory services from $55 to $130 for every student. And that represents a 130% in 136% increase. Is that accurate? Additional fee is $75. That is correct. For, I believe you get a Chromebook for, for free after four years right. for $75. Yes, that's right, but as part of, I can't register unless I pay $130 minimum in fees. And, and we're going to close out this portion. I'm going to ask the next public speaker to come up. We appreciate your comments, I, but, but we're going this to- This is, I, can, I can't, this is, I will, I will give you the option again. Will the board vote to rescind the policy so that we can continue this debate? And I will give you the same answer at this point. It is not an agenda. Okay. Then I'm going to continue. Thank you. No, sir. No, no, no. sir. Can so you the, new, no, sir. the new policy, sir. Do you have? Do you guys all have a copy of the new policy, sir? We're going to move on to the next speaker. <clears throat> this is the only chance we've had to talk about this. You're increasing all of our fees by 136 percent. There is additional time, time to allocated talk about. during our, our board meeting this evening. So when are we going to? When are we going to have public discourse on this? Right now, it's voted in. You don't welcome public discourse. This continues to be a policy. I'm not going to. I'm not going to step down until the board rescinds the policy, so we can have a chance to continue this debate. We're all available via email, via phone call. You can have a discussion with us. Yes, I agree. I would like to have a public, public discourse with, with public everybody. Not in I agree, but you have to respect other people's time. Why don't you shoot us an email? This is the first I've ever heard of you. Like, let, let us know. I sent. We sent an email prior to this passing. I mean, just one. My wife and I. So, yeah, so I can't, I can't, I can't get down because otherwise I won't be able to go through all this for the public record, and this is going to continue to be a policy. This, this is, is a public this record. Is a public this is a public record, record right now. This is a community conversation. This is not public record anyways. So then, can I sign up for the board? Absolutely. Yes. Where's the, the sign up sheet is at the entrance of the room back there at the table. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Angie Nearson. Uh, I'm a community member. I've got four kids that will be coming through Arrowhead. I'm a teacher here as well. Um, and I came a couple months ago and just kind of introduced the idea that uh, we had a committee formed to try to improve the tennis court facility. And, uh, and we've been hard at work. Uh, we're very excited about the uh, excitement that's been uh, kind of come up because of our efforts. Um, this board was actually given to me uh, by Ryan, and these are uh, some of the plans that were drawn up actually in 2019, so right before COVID uh, hit. And, uh, and so you can take a look at these at your leisure, whatever. We've got a good plan and then the best plan. Um, and so uh, we have been hard at work trying to come up with ways to uh, fundraise money for this. Um, this is Jacqueline Schultz. She's got also four kids that will be coming through Arrowhead, okay. and our daughter. And so my daughter now, and I have a freshman. Um, we have a Derby Day coming um, for the Kentucky Derby at Shaniqua. 
where we will uh, we have people invited and uh, we're hoping to generate uh, some donations and also just excitement around our plans and our ideas. Um, we've been working with Ryan very closely. We've been working with Jeff as well. Um, we've been working with the boys team and the girls team and uh, also the USTA, um, just with the dimensions of everything, making sure everything is, is good to go. Uh, but we're really, really excited. We also have this beautiful poster that Jack and made um, for donations and you've got teams of our state championship girls tennis team and then uh, the boys team last year. Yeah, very exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah. And uh, so we're very, very excited. And we just wanted to give you guys an update of what we've been up to on our end. Um, we have uh, people that are, are getting excited and ready to donate as well. And we have uh, the numbers that we have are from before COVID and all of us know things have gone up since then. So hopefully this week, uh, we should be getting some updated numbers um, from Munson on uh, the cost of uh, what it'll be. And um, so I'll keep it short. Yes, uh, there was talk about moving the road through the tennis court. So we don't know if that's still an option or if it's something else. I don't know how about going about figuring that out or who to talk to about that kind of thing, but we wanted to know which plan we should go with because moving the road is obviously going to be a huge undertaking. Yeah, and we have donors, potential donors wondering as well. Yeah. Um, and so that is uh, kind of where we're at. And we just wanted to give you guys an update on the exciting news that we've been working hard and um, we hope to, uh, we've got some funds already uh, put in and uh, Jeff is keeping track of all that for us. So, so yeah, so if you guys have any questions for us, um, otherwise that, that's it. I know there's a lot of people. So. Derby Day invitation. All right. Yeah. Give us your give us your email you know, and uh, yeah. Any questions? Have you signed five posters? Are they going to be scattered about the school? Um. So we we are going to be recognized at halftime of the boys basketball game uh, on the 21st of February. So we hope to kind of have a table set up with all of our stuff there as well. Uh, we're also selling uh, fund crazer tickets um, for the NCAA tournament, um, just different ways to try to fundraise. Uh, also, there's an Instagram page, um, Keep Love in Tennis, and you can go to the, um, the bio, and it has the link, and it will take you to um, the donation page and the Derby invite page, so you could do that. Have, have you guys considered uh, engaging with the WAC? I know a we lot have. of our players yep. practice there. Yep. There's yeah. tons of tons Yeah, of there is a dad that works there as well. Yep. Um, and so we have been in contact with him as well. Perfect. That would yeah. be, be cool to see maybe a fundraiser tournament. Yeah, to, 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 yeah. To yeah. <laughs> it's in the works. <laughs> my, my son plays, and he's going to be a freshman next year. He is planning in his own in his own head to be varsity next year. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's good. Hopefully, we'll have to be fun. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Keeping on the clock, we should be a short and relatively painless. Uh, good evening. Uh, John Norcross, parents of, uh, of a student here at Arrowhead. Um, as we enter another election cycle, um, I have a question about an email that was sent to the Arrowhead School Board from the Republican Party of Walkshaw County. Um, we've learned via an open records request that on May 28, 2022, after the ostensibly nonpartisan spring election and the installation of the board that we see today, an email was sent from Chris Slinker. Uh, it reads, a red, Chris Slinker here from WISRED, we are asking local officials from each community throughout the county to sit on the WISRED Council. We will be discussing issues and having conservatives from throughout the county sit on the council to collaborate. We would like to invite you to represent Arrowhead Schools. We have several meetings throughout the year and will regularly meet with party officials and higher education officials. Are you in? This was sent to the board, one individual of the board. I would like to know, you can pass those, those down. I would like to know what the response was to that email. Inquiry to join us with uh, this red council. Did your open records from uh, the uh, the members Arrowhead account yield any response? 
They did not from an official account. This is an open records request that's gone out to multiple school districts um, on this topic uh, to understand this council um, and, uh, and and what what participation has been on it. Um, I do not know what the response is. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> If you're asking for just an individual response verbally right now, I either didn't respond, so this is going back a while, I can't remember that date, but I either did not respond or said no thanks. I am, I am not on any said. I appreciate that. Same here. I appreciate that. And I would agree, same thing here. I appreciate that. I don't recall I'm getting an email. I don't remember this email either. I'm looking through my emails now. I don't, I don't no, think I received it. I don't remember seeing it in. Sure, I did not respond to it even if it is. I have not been associated with this writing on the line, and I did not see or respond to this. Email. I appreciate that. So, do you want to amend your comment that the whole board received this? I, 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 I will. I don't want to single out somebody, and I, that's fair. So, um, it wasn't sent to the whole board. It was not sent to the entire board. I don't know if it was forwarded on, but that's if I, I take each of you at your word, and I appreciate the responses. I don't know what your response was, though, that, as a recipient, and, and I'd like to know. And, and again, did you find a response on my error? I did not. Okay, that's my answer. Is anybody from this this board represented on the West Red Council? I think at this point, um, your question is in defiance of the rules for this meeting. For what? Uh, the, the, the rules are that the questions are to be posed to the board as a whole, not to individuals. That's number one. And secondarily, if the response was positive for, and from anyone sitting here, there is absolutely no reason that a board member could not serve on a council. None. And I'm, I'm afraid that, that is, that's not correct. It is This is outside of a democratic process to be representing the Arrowhead School District on a political party board that is not elected, it's not accountable to the parents, it's not visible. We don't know what that's what, what goes on at that meeting. So that that is that that's a big question mark. Well, there are time. many, many meetings that I would say one doesn't know exactly what they should they don't know exactly what happens in, in, in many, many different meetings, John. And and so uh, by virtue of someone being associated with any particular meeting or particular group, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does it incite? Yes, so this is participation in a group that is collaborating on conservative policy ostensibly, policy that comes into our district, and we know that those policies have come copied and pasted from lobbyists, and they impact my children and some and parents' children here. So that's a big concern. So if there is representation on that council, I would like to know who it is, and I'd like to know when that council meets and what they talk about. You, 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 you didn't answer it. You said you, you refused to. Very good. Transparency, ladies and gentlemen, transparency. Hi, my name is uh, Val Wisniewski. I reside, I've lived in the village of Carlin for 22 years. I'm also part of a newly formed organization called Come Together Lake Country. Come Together Lake Country is a nonpartisan group concerned that local nonpartisan governing boards are becoming less connected to our community and more influenced by political parties. We are coming together to inform and involve our community, ensure our local officials will engage with and act on behalf of all voices in our community. Your agenda does state for this evening that I'm to address the board as a whole and not to single out an individual. So I'm going to make my comments as big enough to, to comply. Uh, Come Together's main purpose is to educate our community. Our website will be a place for our community to find out information about our local boards. As um, elected officials who represent us, I think it would be of interest to every board member. Our organization has reached out to a couple of current Arrowhead board members in the hopes that they would share their vision on the Arrowhead district to be or to be part of an event where our community could come, meet them and ask questions. Regretfully, we have either been turned down or have yet to receive a response from uh, some people. So I'm asking board members to check the email addresses you gave in your campaign finance statements because I know for a fact there are a couple of emails from constituents 
that as of 6 p.m. today have not received a response. So thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes. So ask, say that last part again and then catch that last part. Uh, about there's emails that have been, not been replied to. Yeah, because my email address that I use for my campaign is no longer active. So I prefer emails to come to my hero. Right? That, that's fair, I understand. So I didn't want to pay for it. No, I, I, I understand. <laughs> Just uh, my understanding is if there are people running for the board that they cannot use their official school board emails to communicate their election uh, campaign. Did you, did you invite me? My vision is really bad. Brandon, no, no, are you? No, why not? <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, I would love to have if you would meet with our group and kind of we can. So, I'll, I, is it okay to email your Absolutely. school board? Great. I've, I've got a question regarding the, the group as well. Can you um, talk through any of the founding member um, associations? Are there are there large contributors to either party in, in this group? Uh, our 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 group is comprised of uh, Republicans and Democrats. Uh, none of us have uh, well. I don't have an affiliation with the political party. I don't know about anyone else, but we come together to uh, discuss what we feel might be concerning about uh, things that are happening at our local boards. Sure, uh, I, I get that, but there's there's no large donors. To oh, no, there's no. Uh, no, no. Uh, any donations that we've received? Not, not received, provided donations to the, either the, the Democratic Party or nope, the zero. Party. Nope, zero, nope, no, no. Otherwise, but I'll, I'll take your answer. Oh, as, I, as I, I will tell you for a fact we have not donated. Not not the group, the founding members. As individuals? Yes. All right. Um, as for myself, no. I can't speak well, to what other. Yeah, thanks for speaking for yourself, but I, I think that would be something to, to acknowledge and communicate if they're calling themselves nonpartisan. So as a nonpartisan uh, representative yourself, um, it, does it matter if you donate to a political party? In my, in my opinion, it does not. However, based off of a previous discussion, trying to alienate an individual or a certain board member association with a political party, in my opinion, it's no different than that of a founding member of a nonpartisan group being a large donator to the political party. Hmm. Well, uh, to be honest, I don't know the financials of who all uh, in that group decide to personally donate to. That's right. But as an organization, we are not donating to any political parties. So, is it? But question that so was it this come together group that took the link from the Arrowhead survey around our superintendent and posted it to more groups? Was that is that the same group? We we like to share information because we think it's important that our community know what's going on. Um, so it was uh, shared because not everyone received that link. So there was no language on your site that suggested that people participate. It wasn't just a sharing, it was a participation request. I believe it, I would have to look. It sounds like maybe you remember differently, but I would think that when you're surveying about uh, somebody that's going to be employed with taxpayers' money and affect stakeholders, that you would like to receive input from your entire community as opposed to just a certain select group of people that your predetermined have now. Well, the predetermined group was actually our Arrowhead community. It was our, our parents, and, and that was what the, the right. board and the administration had approved for participation. And, and as such, uh, the survey went out to those specific members. Um, Right, but it also sounded like you were asking for input from some, like if you were going to have a feeder school, if your child did attend a feeder school as well. So obviously it was intended for future as well. No, no it was intended, it was intended, um, whoever sent the survey, sent it out with intention 
to the directed audience that received it. The people received it. The link was shared and promoted for participation outside of our school. So, but it appeared on Come Together. It, I, I don't doubt that, but I guess my question is, what is wrong with receiving other stakeholders and taxpayers' input as to decisions in regards to that? It wasn't defined as such, and something that represents a survey that is being done at our school, it was approved and supported by the people who intended to have it sent to specific audiences are the ones who retain the rights to that survey. Did you find that there was information that was fraudulent on there, or was the information that you received, was it uh, from community members that you had hoped for? Well, at this point, it's hard to tell. Well, no, you don't, no, we don't the, data, the data has been quite corrupted because, in fact, unintended audiences participated in the survey. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, because of that group? Yes. Yes. Wow. That was, yes. That's a very strong allegation. Yeah. I mean, I was sharing it because I felt it was important that the community be aware that that questionnaire was out there? How many responses did you get from that survey? You know, we're going to start our, our meeting right oh, now. We're we not... will be sharing that in the, uh, okay. it's part of the agenda. Daryl will, will have a presentation around that. I, I just wanted to ascertain that, in fact, it was your group. That... Well, it sounds like you knew it was the group, too, right? Because so you're asking questions that you already knew you. so that you could throw, like, shade at me on, on what I'm trying to do and what the community is trying to do and bringing awareness. I think we'll we'll complete the the public meeting or the uh, public okay. conversation right Thank now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. With that. So, <laughs> 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 <laughs>